Well, welcome everyone to your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. And we are so excited that we are now on YouTube at our YouTube channel. So head over there, take a look at us, like this video, and definitely subscribe to the channel so that you can watch all the upcoming episodes as well. We got a lot coming up this year, in fact, because we have a new book that's going to be released in September. And so we're going to be slowly talking through each of the nine Enneagram types yep. in this new way of looking at the Enneagram that makes it way more practical so that you can become the person that you've always dreamed that you wanted. And you can actually pre-order the book right now on Amazon. It's called More Than Your Number. And it's going to be so helpful as we keep going into the Enneagram on a deeper level. At the same time, it's more simplified. It helps us to understand ourselves in a unique way that we are. So definitely check that out. But we're going to spend the next couple of months walking you guys through it. But before we do, we just want to kind of introduce ourselves now that we're on YouTube and we're going to probably have a lot of new people uh, that don't even know us. So I'm Beth McCord, founder of Your Enneagram Coach, and I'm the chief content officer. And this is my sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jeff. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> now, best friend. It's, it's a privilege to be her sidekick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, best friend, uh, husband, 26 years. We have two kiddos that are 24 and 22. And we're just so excited um, to be here with you all now on video so that you can enjoy the Enneagram from a whole new perspective. Well, our journey with the Enneagram began many, many eons ago. So we're, we're not eons. the bandwagoners <laughs> who jumped on in 2017, We might 18, look like 19. we're 20, but... <laughs> Well, we found out about the Enneagram because some mentors of ours, some marriage mentors, uh, had shared uh, an Enneagram book with us while we were attending seminary in 2001. Well, I had just skimmed it because I was doing seminary and full-time campus ministry, but Beth read it, and it really sunk into her heart, and it became a way of us seeing our relationship in a whole new way that eventually would... Uh, transform how we parented, and we started using it with couples uh, and individuals in discipleship relationships when we were ministering in the local church. Yeah. But what was it, Bethy, that what was so attractive about the Enneagram? What questions did it answer for you? Yeah, well, for me, so this was, again, back in 2001. We got married at 20, um, been best friends the whole time. Got married time. in 95, so this would have been yeah. around uh, six years. Yeah, six, what, six years. Um, best friends, but we kept hitting these like either roadblocks or turbulence and we didn't understand it because it's like, man, we like love being with each other, but what is going on? And I know kids in poverty will put a strain on marriage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Living on a seminary campus. Yes. And at this age, so we were 26, uh, we had two kiddos, three and one. Um, and I, I just, didn't understand what was going on. And I know that we were trying, but we just hadn't have clarity. So when our friends gave us a book on the Enneagram and I dove into it, it brought so much clarity to my own inner world. And I realized, I think everyone kind of senses that with the Enneagram, but for me personally, as a type nine, the peaceful accommodator, we have like this thick internal fog inside us. We don't know ourselves very well. And part of that's because we have this fear of conflict and tension, and we just want peace, you know, all the time. So we're willing to go along to get along. The problem with that is we negate ourselves. We forget ourselves, our passions, our desires, and just go along with everyone else's. And therefore, I didn't know myself. And so when we would be, let's say, in arguments or disagreements, and you were trying to understand me, I couldn't really help the dynamic because I didn't even understand myself. So this book brought that clarity and that understanding so that I could begin to communicate to you and help you to understand me and me help my, understand myself so that we could start to navigate these. Now, we still use it today. It's not like, oh, we figured it out, done. We're always on the journey of learning, but at least we have this tool that brings clarity and understanding uh, that we've never had before. So it, that's really what it answered. And it brought our marriage closer and closer over these last 20 some years. Well, and my journey was actually a little bit different because uh, at first I thought I was a different type. Uh, I wanted to be a different type. 
the type that Beth thought I was was the same type as her mom, and we Which, could not be more different. Right. And there's no way. Yeah. In God's green earth, <laughs> is that the phrase? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. That I would ever be the same type as Beth's mom. Yeah. And I, I think, too, I, I think a lot of men sh- uh, resonate with this, but uh, one, they don't want these tools to be used as criticism. So we were already in the weeds in our marriage. And so now this Enneagram thing is saying not only who I could be at my best, but who I am at my worst. Yes, and like, it is. oh, that's great. So now I'm going to just load up my wife and uh, now she's going to have all this ammo against me to criticize and show me how I need to be growing and so I, I experienced some degree of ambivalence with it. And I was also doing some other study with uh, Allender, and I was doing uh, professional mediations at the time. And so I was on my own path, and Beth was hers, but it was still helpful for us because we had a new language. Um, I can remember one instance where I walked out of the bedroom in our seminary apartment, and you, had, you and your mom had put up yeah. some new window treatments. And you ask what do you think about the window treatments? I said, oh, they're great, and moved on. Well, I could tell that her countenance had sunk, and so I asked her, what were you really asking? And what she was really asking is, am I a good wife? But it's hard for Beth to ask so clearly what it is that it's in her heart because she's afraid of not being enough. She's afraid of losing connection or not being a good enough wife. Well, that be, the Enneagram helped to explain why that dynamic happened. And when it did, it, it didn't prevent that from ever happening again, sure. but it helped us to repair whenever we missed one another. So we wrestled with the Enneagram for a decade. Yeah. So from 2001, uh, we were wrestling. There weren't very many Christian authors who shared our particular worldview. Um, and so we wrestled quietly, but then it started to sort of seep out because we were talking with couples about it. We, yeah, we were church, talking yeah. with individuals about it. Well, at this time, you were a pastor, associate pastor, and doing a lot of work with marriages and individuals, especially like our small group. And yeah, we started sharing it, and, and the people that we were mentoring, discipling, sharing it with them, giving them clarity and insights. And man, they were so thankful for this clarity. And then they started telling others. And, yeah. And then the big move was whenever we, you became our church assistant yep, and uh, we shared it with the staff and it changed our staff meetings immediately. Sure and yep. then they took it to their families. Well, and then it just started to percolate throughout the church and then it started to percolate into other organizations outside the church. So then 2014, we moved. Well, wait, can I tell a funny story? So, in that season, you know, people were really starting to and see the benefit of the Enneagram. Uh, and especially, you know, what we had done is there's lots of different teachers out there with lots yeah, of different worldviews right. or religions and beliefs that we felt very risky at the time to be teaching the Enneagram. Yeah. And we that we didn't believe in. But what Jeff and I had done for a good decade and now now more is, OK, what is truth? God's truth and how are people wording it that is not biblical and how do we bring this in alignment with scripture and can we, if we can't, we got to throw it out. And if it is aligned with scripture, okay, well, let's make sure we word it so that we're always focusing in on Christ and what he has done in and through us. So that is what we've always been doing. And that's why a lot of people in the area that we were living were really drawn to it. So then they started asking us to maybe come and speak to their staff or in different capacities. Well, as a type nine, uh, not wanting the limelight and being a pastor's wife. That's right. The big role of being the pastor wife. I stuff. was like, and but I was more the Enneagram expert compared to mm-hmm. the two of us. And you were more like the theological understanding I was like, oh, they're going to want to hear from you, which is such a nine, like, I don't want to be in the spotlight. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want anyone upset with me. So I was like, here, you do it. So it kind of felt like I was, you know, behind the scenes whispering, okay, now say this, now do this, and like putting together all the information. And yet... I remember teaching once on each type and forgiveness, uh, why forgiveness. And you're mm. like, yeah, I don't know if I would have taught it that way. I still think I was right, but that was the <laughs> dynamic where, one, we were both trying to figure out through our own personal lens, uh, and then our 
trying to find a message together, but there was this dynamic that you were deferring to me, and and that was what we kind of were groomed into yeah. and thought, yeah. like, this is the right way to do that. Generationally, for sure, like from my parents' generation, passing that down, and then also from a Christian denominational sense, yeah. And so when people started kind of looking to you, like, oh, can you come here? Can you come there? I was like, wait a second. I'm the one that knows the Enneagram more than you do. And I felt very overlooked and hurt. Um, but it made sense, you know, and because I had chosen to, you know, put you in the front. I've chosen to be overlooked. And so then fast forward, we came down to Nashville, Tennessee. We moved here. Uh, with our kids, uh, they were, you know, just beginning high school. And, with their kids? Uh, as if there was a possibility oh. we could have left them. <laughs> right. We decided to move to Nashville <laughs> and left our uh, new teenagers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back, Back in, in Illinois. Illinois. So we, when we all moved down here, um, I actually kind of went quiet with the Enneagram for quite a while because I wasn't really sure if anyone would really take to it. Now, this was 2014, and really when it started to blow up, for, for everyone's frame of reference, was 2000, late late 2016 with Ian Cron and Suzanne Stabile's book. So I kind of just kept learning, kind of removed myself, um, and then was working for some people that, you know, really were into a lot of other assessments. And I was like, no, I really think this could be a, a big deal because of how much not only did it help us, but how much it's helped the people that we have been working with. And so we then started again, started telling people that we were closest to here in town about the Enneagram and helped them to understand themselves and saw their marriages starting to really blossom and thrive. And it was just such a beautiful experience um, for us to see others um, in that way. And I really kind of felt like I want to see how we can make this a process that people can walk through some step-by-step -step process to discover who they are, to explore that, and then become who Christ has called them to become, which is more like him in the design he made them. So I started kind of thinking about that and formulating it. And then in, in late 2015, I had a moment where someone really overlooked me. Um, and as a nine, that's one of our greatest fears. So, and this is in the Enneagram space and they could have launched me, they could have helped me get to places, but I felt extremely overlooked. And it was in that sadness and anger that I really felt God saying, why are you so angry? And I'm thinking, really? This, this isn't hard to see. Like, why are you asking me this? This is pretty clear and calm and patient. I just felt like him saying again to my heart, why are you so angry? And it was very clear to me, I'm angry because I overlook myself. And what I permit, I promote. And as a nine, that was a huge truth bomb to myself that I am called to share the abilities and the blessings that God has given me. And what I was actually doing was I was hoarding it. I was holding on to it. Not intentionally, because as a nine, we really want to just bless people and get along to go along. But I recognized then I was hoarding what I had been given. And it's just like, uh, you know, the treasure and the talents, you know, am I going to actually do something with that and watch it, you know, blossom and grow and have a ripple effect? Or well, am I just going to keep it to myself? In fall 2015, I also step away from the job that brought us here, brought us here mm -hmm. to Nashville. So our backs were against the wall. Our teenagers had a, were having a difficult time transitioning into a new community they were starting to get traction, so we wanted to stay. And I remember that fall, that's when we decided, hey, I was going to start um, what's called Restoring Peace, which was just pastoral counseling and professional mediation. And Beth was going to start uh, coaching with the Enneagram, which some wasn't really around that much that no. we were aware of. And definitely no one was doing it from a Christ-centered perspective and yeah. through the lens of discipleship. Or coaching, for that matter. I remember researching and searching for it and... There was just one person uh, that had anything kind of around the whole coaching perspective. Um, and yeah, so it really wasn't out there. And so I remember during that time, I did a classic nine thing once again, thinking, because you'd raise support when we were missionaries and God always blessed it. And I thought, oh, that's going to take off. And I'm going to, you know, have to, you know, trudge through like wet cement for a really long time before we can get somewhere with this. And so I was like, you know what, why don't I just put your Enneagram coach underneath your ministry 
and we'll just see what happens. And you were so wise <laughs> and loving, even though it hurt my feelings um, at the time. You were like, no, you need to do this separate. Like this needs to be your thing. And as a nine, it's like, no, I want a connection. And you were really, again, wise and knowing as a nine, I needed to forge my own path. You were right there supporting me and encourage me doing all the things necessary to make sure that I could succeed, but I had to do it in my own way, in my own uh, path and, and the way that God had designed it. So, so after a typical entrepreneurial story, it kind of started in spits and spurts that <laughs> right. Beth, yes. you know, was still working part time. I'm still trying to fundraise and get restoring peace off the ground. Uh, but you're, you're on social media starting to grow a little bit. You're just yep. posting every day about each Enneagram type from a Christ center perspective. And so she steps then, away. Well, then, and then we realized, well, nope, I was too already, early. I was coaching the people from Instagram that wanted coaching. This is great. I'm enjoying it. I'm formulating my own way of doing Enneagram coaching. And in my vision, it's mentoring through the gospel, right? So it's always in a discipleship format. Like how can I get you from where you are to be more Christ-like for you to know who you are, but also whose you are, your identity in Christ. And so I started coming up with a three-step coaching process, which we use here at Your Enneagram Coach, discover, explore, become. So helping them to discover their type. And then I would um, ha lay out an exact path of guide sheets that we would walk them through each of their first five sessions and watch them just blossom and grow and got tons of feedback and made little tweaks here and there. Um, and then that's, you know, when I stepped away, like, okay, this is going really well. I'm going to step away from my part-time job. And hopefully this will just start really exploding. And it did grow, but not as quickly as we needed it to. So I went back to work part-time um, while still growing your Enneagram coach. And that's in fall of 2016. And that is when The Road Back to You came out uh, by Ian Cron and Suzanne Stabile. And it just swept the nation. And so I tell people, it's kind of like I had been on uh, surfboard. a surfboard for a while, like paddling out. And then, you know, sometimes I'd hit a little wave, you know, but I was like, oh, that wasn't quite it. And so I go back out and then the road back to you went out and then a tsunami came. And, but I was ready. I was out there and I had a plan and a path. And it was then that we started uh, training people to become certified in the well, Enneagram. Before that, I, I think in the midst of that process of you creating your own approach to coaching, a, a, a mission statement emerged yes, about what absolutely. YEC was going to be and what yeah. made it different from everybody else. Well, we had the great privilege, both you and I, of working with uh, Michael Hyatt and company, which is now Full Focus. Um, and we learned so much from that company of mission statements and value propositions and, you know, efficiencies and all these different things of how to have a platform, um, online platform and teaching and coaching business. So what we learned from them was that you need to have a solid mission statement and like a value proposition. And I recognized, yeah, that it is so vital because it's easy for any organization or person for that matter to get off course and to get away from their main purpose. So what we decided um, that your Enneagram coach's mission is, and you guys hear this every podcast for people to see themselves with astonishing clarity so they can break free from self condemnation, fear and shame by knowing and experiencing the unconditional love, forgiveness and freedom in Christ. And that is how we do everything here. Courses, speaking, but, the important thing about yeah, that there's mission one statement, really important statement in there that's missing that's in that missing. statement. That's missing. One big word that's missing in our mission statement, and it's the word Enneagram. Because the Enneagram, we agree, it's an amazing tool, but it's just a tool. It's the gospel that transforms us. The Enneagram is like an x-ray. It's going to show us what's broken, what's not broken. It brings the clarity, but we need an actual healer. We need Jesus Christ, the great physician, to heal us. And that's exactly what he has done and continues to do uh, within us. That's right. And so out of that became a whole wave of us being able to share this gospel-centered approach to the Enneagram. Well, the initial thing that that uh, translated into was very natural for us because that's how the Enneagram came to us, is that we um, 
did a small group uh, of couples to do uh, marriage coaching with the Enneagram. Beth had been doing a lot of individual coaching. Um, and so one of the first efforts, or uh, one of the first couple of efforts, uh, because we'll get into our certification program as well, is that we started a small group and just started coaching these couples. Well, that translated into the book, Becoming Us. So if you go to becomingus.com, you can see more about how what we've created, not only with our Becoming Us book that you can get on Amazon, but also our uh, courses, which we've created 45 different courses for each couple type, where we talk through a deep dive on that per, or each type. Uh, we go through core motivation, spirituality, uh, family of origin, communication, conflict, and becoming your best self together. All of that, you can go and take a look at it, becomingus.com. But really what's really at the heart of your Enneagram coach is our certification program. Yeah. And at this point, we're getting close to 2,000 coaches in over 25 different countries. Yeah, it's so fun. So for me and for you, one of our greatest passions is working with mentoring, leading others in a deeper relationship with Christ. And we see that the tool of the Enneagram can be a really spectacular way of doing that. And what we realized was with our, our um, background in missions was, yeah, we want to create a movement of people that are like-minded and passionate about seeing other people grow. And what if we could create a certification program that really equips them really well in steps, you know, A all the way to Z so that they can use this wherever they're at. So having almost 2,000 people have taken our course over 25 plus countries, it really is inspiring and it's a privilege. It's an honor that God would use us to that capacity. Um, and we take it very seriously, you know, but we love our coaches that we get to spend time with in our private Facebook group community, encouraging them, mentoring them as they go out to the world and love others. Well, many of you may know who we are. Some of you may not have known us, but you're aware of the Enneagram. But there may be some of you that are just intrigued by this and really don't have a grasp of what the Enneagram is yet. Oh, Beth, why don't you do what you do best and just walk the wheel, just walk the circle of the Enneagram. The Enneagram is a, uh, speaks to a symbol, uh, Ennea meaning nine and uh, gram meaning drawing. So it's the symbol that people are referring to, and there are nine basic types. Why don't you just go through the names that you've created for each of the types and uh, just a little bit on core motivations and why that's important with the Enneagram for each nine of the nine types. Yeah, so the Enneagram really is that nine-pointed geometric figure that you talked about. Think of it as a nine-pointed star almost. I'm not sure if people can see it in the camera, but it's actually there on your mug. That is true. It's right here. <laughs> um, and, you know, this uh, nine-pointed geometric figure shows that there are nine basic Enneagram types or nine ways of seeing the world. So it's how we see the world. Think of lenses, right? So let's say there are nine different colored lenses that you can see and then interpret and then react to the world. And that's why so often your best friend, your spouse, your kid, your coworker, whoever does something so different than you. And you are like, what? Why would you think of it that way? Or why would you do that? It's because we literally see the world and operate from totally different motivations. There are nine uh, different types with their own core motivations. And the core motivations are the driving force behind why, and that word why is the biggest thing behind the Enneagram, why you think, feel, and behave in particular ways. Well, what's interesting, Beth, about the Enneagram is that it can sort of go both ways. An individual type may have uh, varying behaviors, but they're coming from the same core motivations. Mm -hmm. But each of the nine types may have the same behavior but each of them are doing it for very different reasons. Right, yeah, so I usually walk the wheel with that with like cleaning a house. You might see a perfectly clean home, but each of the nine types will do it for different reasons based on their core motivations. So that's really at the heart of most of what we teach and do here is the core motivations. Yes, there are lots of other layers like the wings and the Enneagram paths. Those are the two lines that your type is connected to, to two other numbers. Um, there's instinctual subtypes. I mean, we could go on and on and on. All, all those layers are beautiful and um, help us to understand ourselves in deeper and fuller ways. And we're definitely going to get into, especially the wings and the Enneagram paths in the upcoming months for each type. So it's going to be really great. But where could someone go to get um, a summary of each of the of all the core motivations? 
core motivations for each type? Yeah. So when you're really looking to find your type or to understand your type at its core, again, the core motivations, the core fear, the core desire, the core weakness, and the core longing. And you can see all nine types core motivations at your Enneagram forward slash core motivations. So it's that simple. So here soon, we're going to go through all the nine types, but why don't you just define briefly what each of the core motivations are. Yeah. So what is the core fear? What is the core desire? Yeah. So the core fear is what you're always running away from or trying to prevent. Now you might not necessarily consciously are aware of it, but when it's happening and now that you're going to start seeing this, you're going to know for sure. And then you have a core desire, what you're always trying to obtain. Like if I have that thing, life is going to be so perfect and grand. And then we have a core weakness. Now, a lot of teachers call this the passion or the deadly sin, but we call this the core weakness because we are weak, but he is strong and his grace is sufficient for us. And that core weakness constantly reminds us that we need to seek Christ to work in and through us. And then we have a core longing. This is the message your heart longs to hear. And we try to satisfy that in a lot of different ways here on earth, but there's only one that can satisfy that, and that's Jesus Christ. And the good news is he's already done it and continues to pour into us like a spring of living water. So instead of digging holes and try to put water into it that won't keep that water whole, we can just turn to the spring, which is Jesus, to fully be satisfied. And that's the beautiful thing of the gospel. Well, why don't you just go through the names of all yeah. nine types? Okay, so the type ones are the principled reformers. Type twos are the nurturing supporters. Type threes are the admirable achievers. Type fours are the introspective individualists. Type fives are the analytical investigators. Type six are the faithful guardians. Type sevens are the enthusiastic optimists. Type eights are the passionate protectors. And type nines are the peaceful accommodators. Now, I, we would love to spend time walking through all the nine types to help you to understand the, the few layers um, of each of the nine types. We don't have time here on this podcast, but we have a wonderful course called Discovering You that you can get at yourenneagramcoach.com that will walk you through the basics of the Enneagram. So we really encourage you to take that as well if you're wanting to understand the Enneagram a little further, but also um, any of our books uh, will do that as well. So the Becoming Us book, we also have uh, nine journals, one for each type called the Enneagram Collection. And we have a free assessment on our website at yourenneagramcoach.com where you can take a free assessment, free test to see which is your main type. It will show you the percentages of all nine types and then take a dive into the core motivations of the nine types to make sure that the test is reflecting who you really are. Now, if you're stuck, we do have a, a variety of amazing certified coaches that we've trained, and you can find your coach at myenneagramcoach.com, and they will take you not only through a discovering process, but also exploring your type further. Now, this is just the beginning. Uh, we're going to be lining up for the next several weeks and months uh, where we're going to be going through a deep dive on each Enneagram type, and we're going to follow that with a panel of people of that type sharing the insights from their perspective with their own words and their own ideas and experiences to elaborate on both the challenges, but also the opportunities, the strengths and liabilities of each of the nine Enneagram types. But here's what's going to make it really, really special. Yes. And that is a concept that Beth and I have been able to develop over the last several years. Now, we mentioned a little bit earlier that we had stepped away from a church in 2015. Well, that put us on a new trajectory as a couple. It was one of the darkest seasons mm -hmm. we had ever faced as a family. Yeah, together we were working through some some real pain that we had we all had experienced. And together collectively we were really trying to dive in and understand ourselves in a deeper way to bring about growth that we had never experienced before. And, and what comes to mind is Psalm 40 that, you know, and mm, what David yes. is saying like I I was I fell into a pit. The Lord lifts us up out of the pit and he puts our feet on a rock and gives us a new song to sing. Well, this is the new song. This is out of the sorrow mm -hmm. and the pain, out of uh, the ashes comes something really beautiful. And it's a new concept, a new approach that we find uh, helpful, more helpful than our other approaches to the, to the Enneagram. And we call it the Enneagram internal profile. Yeah. And a couple things to keep in mind and why even do this. Well, 
one, it answers the question that we are more than our number. Uh, I'm not just a six. Beth is not just a nine. There's so many different facets. If you can kind of think of uh, Sherwin-William paint colors. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to get a blue, sorry, there's a thousand blues. <laughs> right. <It's>, or more. <laughs> you're gonna, it's going to take you yeah. a little bit, and you're going to want to test those blues, right? Well, that's true of our Enneagram numbers. There aren't just... There are nine basic types of the Enneagram, but there's so many variations and shades. We wanted an approach to the Enneagram that actually highlights the uniquenesses of those. But number two, uh, the Enneagram, a lot of times, is just descriptions. And what there's a great phrase in the recovery world that says that discovery is not recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, observation is not transformation. And so we wanted to move beyond description to actual self-leadership in a way to understand yourself to engage with your own heart, apply the truth of the gospel, and move forward. But one of the really interesting parts about how EIP works is the idea, have you ever felt a divided sense of self? Like there's part of me that wants to do this, part of me wants to do that. Or when you're really angry with your spouse and you say stuff like, um, uh, maybe it gets even as strong as I hate you, or I'm Mm -hmm. so angry with you, but at the same time... I love you, I'm compassionate for you, or I under stand you or like that's right there's so many different layers at one time you know it's not just i'm frustrated and that's it it's i'm frustrated but man i can see your point of view or i don't like that we're going in this direction but i'm willing to yield i mean there's so many ways of understanding that we have a lot of different parts of us in any given moment and so bethy why don't you talk a little bit about the idea of eip and it's uniqueness and what it is that we're going to be focusing on specifically tied to the Enneagram. Yeah. So the main thing you want to know is that you are, you have a main type and that doesn't change. So I'm a type nine and that type nine, you know, is beautiful as it is when it's healthy and then it has consequences when it's not. So what we have done with the Enneagram, we also talk about the different layers of health. Uh, Don Richard Riso came up with the levels of, de- of development, which we really enjoy. But through a gospel lens, we wanted to bring clarity to that. And we see it as the levels of alignment with the gospel. And we can be either aligned or misaligned. Now, when we're aligned, what we're going to find within our main type, that there's actually two parts of us. There's the wounded child and the beloved child. So the wounded child is that part of your heart that experienced life at a young age and it experienced the world through some trauma and some hurt and it was trying its best to help you but it was ill-equipped and so a lot of those strategies really no longer work and yet they're still there trying its best to help us Um, but you're going to see how it doesn't work with yourself and your relationships but we have a beloved child this is the part of ourself that is spirit led. This is the part of ourselves that follows Jesus Christ and knows who we are and whose we are. This is when our heart is aligned with the truth of the gospel and it is wise and it gives us insights. And when we follow this part of our heart, all the other parts of our heart come into alignment. Now, when we talk about parts, that we have connecting parts to our main type. We have the wings, the two numbers on either side of your main type. And we have the Enneagram paths, those two types that are connected to the lines connecting to your main type. And those four parts show up in our life often, either following the wounded child, if we're misaligned in the moment, or when we're following the beloved child, when our heart is aligned with the truth of the gospel. So our wings can show up both in negative and positive ways. And same with the Enneagram path types that we have inside us. And that is what we're going to be unfolding and showing you because the goal of what we're doing at Your Enneagram Coach, again, is to help you get back into alignment and to experience the joy and the abundant life that Christ has for us. And so when we can follow the beloved, because the beloved is following Jesus. Well, a couple of stories I think for each of us might be helpful. And uh, as I said before, we're going to be going uh, much further in future episodes in regards to each EIP for each Enneagram type. But I remember in that season in 2016 and realizing there were, I I was just devastated. Uh, And the fog, I had no sense of vision, no sense of direction or even passion. But 
the strategies that I've been using as a young man to cope with experiencing pain like that and sorrow and loneliness um, is were coming online. And so I found myself at times, uh, like I, I buy books. Uh, I, when I'm anxious, I buy books. So you can tell where my heart's at at times based upon how many Amazon packages are showing up at the door. Well, I'm a six and I have a five wing. Uh, my five wing, I actually, in order to kind of get clarity and differentiate the experience, I, I actually call that part of my heart Bob. Um, and there's a reason for calling it Bob, and you can call whatever you want. You can call it, it the five part. <laughs> the five part, the, the five, whatever part. you want. That's right. Yeah, uh, reading Jeff. But the idea is that books solve problems for me when I can't find solutions myself, and so I don't know who is, to trust. So when your six is anxious, doesn't know what to do, you have a lot of self-doubt, your type five part comes online and tries to assist you yes. by buying lots of books and thinking I will gain enough insight and wisdom to get past this self-doubt and anxiety. Right. The difficulty in this time was that although I had this tremendous library of a few thousand uh, books, it wasn't resolving anything. And so there was part of my heart that even though I'd buy a book, I wouldn't read it. And, and that's where this nine part of my heart, not type nine, is a uh, connecting type to type six. And I call him Phil. Phil comes in to just kind of deaden uh, the longing, deaden the sorrow, and just kind of get numb and calm down and kind of disassociate or, or kind of distract from the pain, mm -hmm. whether that be watching Netflix or it could be any number of things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite things, Beth sometimes catches me when I go to Taco Bell. Like that's, <laughs> that's when I know Phil's online is whenever I'm going to Taco Bell. That's funny. When in this season, what is needed the most in that sorrow and healing and going through grief is simply being present and being still. Um, and I remember reading uh, in Exodus where God told Moses right before the Red Sea, um, you only need to be still. The Lord will fight for you. And it was this one moment to start to recognize healing wasn't going to take place through all the strategies I had used throughout my life. I was going to need to be still as a type six. I mm -hmm. couldn't think my way out of it. EIP began to help me understand the strategies and the strategies I dealt with my pain, but also the strategies that I use and resources I use to live out my calling. Because moving from being a pastor to now a CEO of a gr growing global organization, I still read books. <laughs> and there are times well, when good. I need to still be still the way in the right? way that Phil was coping in the past, but now Phil's an opportunity for me to rest and uh, just be present with what actually what's happening. Why don't you share just one story of insight for you, Bethy, and how EIP has helped you? Yeah, so... For me, you know, being a type nine, the peaceful accommodator, I just want everyone to be happy. Let's be at peace. Let's get along to go along. Um, and so part of my heart that I think has always assisted me is my six part. Um, and when she is misaligned and following the wounded child, making sure, oh, I don't want anyone to be upset. You know, I want everyone to be happy. Um, she's more like worrying, Wendy. And she is worrying about all the possibilities that could come up to derail relationships, to have discord. Remember, these parts of us are trying to assist the core motivations of our main type. So my sixth part is trying to think of all the worst case, scenario, worst case scenarios so that I can avert all of them so that we stay in peace. Now, when that doesn't happen and you know I'm still misaligned and all my efforts aren't working, then my three part um, can get really upset because it feels like it's failed, I'm not good enough, I'm not a good enough wife or a mom or whatever it is, and and my image is tarnished, um, and I don't have value. And then usually my type one part will chime in. Um, this is all when I'm misaligned. My type one part will chime in and start to say how bad I am, how I'm not um, a, a good wife, a, the wife that does the right thing. And that can be really detrimental to me personally because there's just a lot of self-condemnation that kind of comes in that wave. Of course, then still, you know, my six part is fearful. It's still that moment. My three parts like, great, now you're not good enough. But then my type eight part is sick of it all. <laughs> and she doesn't want to hear from anyone else. And so she just wants to plow over everyone. And that could be like kind of like steamrolling over the family, um, 
pushing people away, getting stubborn, passive aggressive, because I'm still a nine, not a full fledged eight. Um, and I'm trying my best to protect myself from my inner world and the outer relationships. And when I do it from that misaligned way, it does not help. So the goal is to recognize when these things are starting to happen and occur, recognizing the patterns and using it, like I say in a lot of podcasts and teaching, using it like a rumble strip on the highway. You know, when you're on the highway and you're veering off course, that rumble strip says, um, hello, if you keep going this direction, you're going to fall off the road and into a pit. So let's redirect, get back onto the healthiest path. So when I'm aware of these less healthy attributes that are popping up, I'm now aware to one own it because I'm still safe in Jesus Christ. I am still beloved. So I can own it and I can ask the Holy Spirit to come in and help my mind and my heart to remember whose I am and to believe the beloved child part of my heart, which I call Coach Beth because Coach Beth shows up for all of you. Um, but does she show up for herself? And so what I'm hoping that I'll do is use that beloved part of my heart to remind the rest of me that I'm loved, I'm cherished, that yes, we made a mistake or we're a little bit misaligned. Let's ask for apology or let's ask for help. And then my heart can go back at rest and these parts come back in a way that is beautiful. So my type six part, Wendy becomes wonderful, Wendy, because she helps me to be courageous, to persevere, to be responsible. My three part helps me to do the next good thing uh, and to have confidence in how God created me. And my type one part helps me to be principled and grounded. And my eight part is so beautiful because she still wants justice, but she's able to help me to assert myself in ways that my type nine kind of wants to just be slothful or disengaged. She's like, nope, let's keep going. You have a lot to offer. So we're just going to help you guys to understand how your parts of your heart um, either are misaligned or aligned and how we can keep them back into alignment because it will bless you. It will deepen your relationship with God and it's going to bless others. So if you're starting to or be one, the curiosity is perked and just wanting to understand yourself, but you know, a few ways in which EIP has really helped Beth and I is that what, number one, how are we showing up in our marriage? Who's showing up? What part of us is showing up in our marriage? Uh, maybe you're even confused by some of the feedback that you're getting from people mm. that you feel people experience you differently than what you're intending or what you have in your heart. Or what kind of parent? How, are you showing up as the parent that you want to be? Uh, that you yeah. want to be? Do you find that maybe you're quick... Um, to judge or you're quick to get angry or frustrated or you're quick to comply or and you're yield. just sometimes what we've learned to coaching people we're very different at home than when we're with just everyone else and that comes back to our parts mm -hmm. and it's very important to recognize what's going on to help us to get back into alignment well and and then lastly in regards to your career do you feel stuck mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out what what do you want to do next well, we're going to be addressing all of these, not just for everyone, but specifically for your specific Enneagram type and both what God has already gifted you in, what some of the liabilities are that you may be facing, but also some of the opportunities that you have uh, because God is for you and he's going to carry on to completion uh, what he began. And this is all coming from our book that will launch in September, More Than Your Number. And again, you can pre-order it now. Um, but journey with us in the next you know, several months as we explore all the nine types, EIPs, um, Enneagram internal profiles, and not only from a kind of descriptive, but also with panels, guests that are going to literally share with us their life experiences and under understanding these misaligned and aligned parts. So if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're listening to this podcast on the various platforms that we're on, um, be sure to leave us a review and share these with your friends, with your loved ones, with those that you know could also benefit yes. from uh, hearing an in-depth dive onto a new way of approaching the Enneagram that can lead to the kind of relationships not only with ourselves but with God and with others that we've always desired. We're so thankful that you guys decided to join us. Yep. And don't forget, the Enneagram reveals your need for Jesus, not your need to work harder. It's the gospel that transforms us. Thanks for joining us.